I'm here with Mary Hetmansberger, and she's going to show us how to put together a book that's all about the type. Yes, it is. And first of all, I'm going to show you how to make a really easy, quick book. Okay. Really easy, quick book. So where are we so starting? We're going to start with just 9 by 11 pieces of paper, but you can use anything. What I really like about this is that the binding that you get. So we're just taking 9 by 11 pieces of paper and folding them in half. If you didn't have 9 by 11, it wouldn't matter. It just affects the finish size of it your does. book. It does. But in any case, what we do is we take it like this. And then I don't really ever measure, but you're going to basically cut two... And I already got to have them cut because I am matching to this. But you would okay. cut all your pieces of paper about an inch. Is there any rule I was going to say? Okay, about so about an, an inch, inch, inch and, and a half. half in. Yeah. And what you're going to do is one of these or half of them, like half of these were done where I take the middle area out like this. So you are cutting, I mean, this is the tiniest yep. little sliver of paper in the world. Right. So that I you end that. up with just a little bitty um, area that's open. And then you take the other half of all these pieces of paper and you come in and cut just right the opposite. along the spine. So you're not actually cutting anything out. You're simply cutting down the seam. Right. So this one has this look and this one has this one. So I've already assembled most of this, but the, the real thing is when you begin, you have to work off of just one side. So I'm going to take this paper here and see what was last done. So this was last done. The one that was cut in the center, in the center. was the last one that was done. If right. you were starting from the beginning, it wouldn't matter. You could start with either. And I've done them with different colored pieces of paper, so it really is quite, ah. a, quite interesting. So then you're going to take the one. I have the whole one that I'm working into. So I take it like this. All I do is just roll this very gently. So you're not creasing. I want to <laughs> say that. When you say roll, that's important. You're not creasing. Right. You're just rolled. Rolling in here. Slide it in. Oh, okay, I just got this. You are a genius. <laughs> Not so I am, much. that is amazing. And then this, this is a no sew book. No sew book. And then this one is the last one. So, like I said, this is my, now I have these guys. So I right. do the same thing here. You roll it and insert it. Okay, my brain is popping in a thousand different ways now because I'm super excited. So this do is you super need to easy. Use a Thin paper because of this, or can Not you use really. any paper? You just have to make sure that it is that it does have the ability to roll a little bit. Okay. But, if, but what you end up with is is a very nice book. I know this is so cool. The way that you can really see how those pages are together, yeah. and there's no sewing involved. No. I, I, I'm gonna go and make a million of these books, Mary. I'm but just, my brain's going. It also lays flat. Which is nice. Which is so ideal, Which especially is really because nice. I know we're going to be working with stamps right. of all kinds. Exactly. And when you're stamping, you really want that flat surface to You really want a nice surface. With. But it's a real fun book. I, I've done it for years. I'm not even sure where I figured it out or learned <laughs> it or whatever. It's just a real fun book. So anyway, we've got our book now. Yeah. Now, um, I love antiques, and I love finding interesting things. These are some stamps that I've collected over the years. And I was going to say, these are letterpress stamps. You find them a lot of times at antique yes. stores. They're meant to be used in huge printing presses. Right. They're sometimes or made in the metal. drawers. Yes. In the drawers. And that's where they that's were originally. That's the ideal, is right. if you can find them in the drawers. That's the big one. And I've got a bunch of drawers at home, but these are really fun to play with. They have a, a surface on them. It's like... It, some of them have even copper or metal, but mm -hmm. it's almost like a floor mic or something. It's mm -hmm. a different surface, not just the wood. Um, anyway, but these are what I, these are what we're going to play with today. And I've got several here. Just wanted to kind of go over the way that I do it. I make it very simple. You can use the roller. You can, you know, get all involved. But basically, um, you can use inks. You can use acrylics. Or you can use embossing. And I'm going to just show you how I do the acrylics. And then I'm going to do some embossing. So, you know, I asked you if you needed a palette or anything, and you were like, no, no, no. no whoa. Well, that's probably why you do need a palette. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put this over here. <laughs> but I actually can come in, and what I do is I just paint right on the... Now, are you worried about the acrylic paint drying on that no, stamp? No, and if it, if it gets a little bit like where I need a little bit of water, I just add a little bit of water... This is probably not going to be a good idea with the yellow because it may not show up as good, but I will give it a good shot. And you just go ahead and you're painting on there using a small brush. Yep. And it doesn't even have to be even or perfect or nope. anything like that. It's just all about getting some kind of, ooh. I think there was some black left I was going to say, but I love that unexpected happy surprise of getting the mix of something that was there, was there with something ago. new. And what I also like to do is I like to have some of those, you know, lighter colors 
or you know where it, where you're only going to yeah, get part of part of, the, part of it. Part now of I image. notice that you're working on a very textured paper, and I'm always afraid of stamping on a textured paper like this. Is this just a watercolor paper? It's just a watercolor paper, but I actually like what happens because in some ways it makes it more interesting. It's not such a perfect stamp. Yeah, because you know sometimes I think we get so excited about getting perfect stamps and perfect looks, but exactly. it's so nice in its imperfection. So I'm going to show you real quick. Let me put this book aside. What I'm going to show you now is just some really fun embossing techniques. Um, so, so there I'm are lots of kinds of embossing. This is heat embossing very this specifically. Is just heat, right. We're going to be using a super sticky embossing ink, right? right? Exactly. And so this is going to come in like this. Now, this is the kind of stuff that you would do to make the cover of your book, you know, or maybe if you wanted to work inside your book this way. Well, but or layer, layers. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of layers. So I'm just going to put this on. That has a great color, that bright hot orange. Oh, and you know what I like so much is, again, because you're stamping on this bumpy surface, you're getting an imperfect image, which is fantastic. And then that bright color is going to look so the distressed. The other reason it's imperfect is because these are not like rubber stamps. So yes. these are actually very flat and smooth. So they're only going to pick up part way. Now, one of the things is, so now you're going to keep this with a heat gun mm -hmm. that's specifically designed for melting embossing powder. And embossing right. powder is essentially little particles of plastic. And when you melt it, and you can tell it's melted when it starts to get shiny, which we can see right there, yep. it starts to congeal together and to bond to the paper that you're going ahead and embossing it on. That's such a cool moment. It is. It is. It's like magic. And you can use some pens. Um, they have embossing pens, but basically you can use these and get the same exact result. That's such a neat idea too, because you know, at first it just looks like a regular pen, but then you go ahead and you can throw some embossing powder on. Mm. And look at the color. It's got that really kind yeah, of brownish color. Exactly. So it's very fun. It's very, very fun. cool. So now here's the thing. If we if we look at some of these finished pieces that you have here, mm -hmm. right? Like this one that I like. Now this could be easily the cover of a book. And you can see here if we open this, that's exactly what it is. And yet the same technique is used inside right, right. to also be the inside. So we're not thinking of the cover and right. the front of the book as totally separate things. They're actually Just using a, the same idea. Right. So when people see the cover, they know what to expect inside. You can also take pre-made books and just work on the surface. That's great. And of course, we can use this paper, we can use this paper, we collage, can use any paper that we have.